Hedgehog. Okay. So the game is a big like open world space trading game and the in the same sort of vein as something like Elite Dangerous, um, but really sort of like low poly and retro futuristic. What we're showing today is just a combat demo. A pirate is gonna try and kill you and you've got to try and kill them first. That's all there is to it. So turn the key and hit the button.
given you three missiles. But... So yeah, what you want to do is play chicken with the missile and just aim at like a slight angle so that you fly past it. Because while it's turning around to reacquire you, your missile has one has another shot to take it out. Yep, that'd be perfect.
to and make a living. So if you spend all of your time down here in this neck of the woods, you can totally do that. And the news that you get about the game world is largely going to only be the news that these people would receive. So if they've got particularly ill feelings toward people from Tega or something like that, then you're likely to end up feeling like the Tegans is this bunch of horrible people that nobody likes. Whereas if you spend all of your time in Tega, you might experience the reverse. And it's a fairly open-ended game, so although you can roam around and check out different places and things like that, there's no specific, uh, there's no specific main storyline for you to follow. There's a whole bunch of small stories involved, like you know, people will talk to you and give you stuff to do, and you can go from A to B and uh, see whatever it is they've got for you to uh, got for you to do. But they're not necessarily going to send you on some epic quest to save the universe. We wanted to specifically keep you as like a, a really small player, like a bit part thing. You're a, a, a ship's captain of a small ship. You're never going to be the grand savior of anything. So other rooms of the ship. This is your power room. This is where you configure what systems go on and off when you hit MCON. MCON kills at the moment jump drive, comms, and the reactor. But if we wanted to, we could also have it kill our batteries or our weapons or whatever else. You can manually power things up or down or set which ones go into an out of uh, thing for MCON just makes you as stealthy as possible. Okay. Engineering? So, hypothetically, had you not done as well, if something was broken here, we could fix it. Let's say the helm had died. We would disconnect the helm, open it up, and this is your ship's helm module. So, we would open it by unscrewing it. And if these parts were destroyed, we would drag them out and replace them with working ones from our storage. So, it'd be up to us to make sure we have a healthy inventory of spare parts at all times. Where do you get these? Buy them? Buy them at space stations. Okay. Or if you raid a derelict starship or something like that, you might be able to take some useful components from it. So it's just enough work that you can't really do it in the heat of combat. So you really want to make sure that you've got as many parts inside it as possible. So you've got empty slots here for extra parts. You want to fill them all up so that if a missile hits and it happens to destroy a few components, as long as it takes out one of the ones that's on one of these three arms, you're fine. If it takes out one of the ones on the right, it's going to kill the module. Because you need an unbroken chain of things that move from left to right to get a working module. So yeah. So if you have all three, then it just means if any of the ones on the left get taken out, as long as one's still working, it's still going to function. So that's engineering. Over here in Comps, we can read news from the local star system. So we read all the news. This is all the current stuff that's out there. And we can go, OK, cool, and we can read stuff. Some of it might be just interesting things about the game world, and some of it might be uh, hints as to where you can buy particularly cheap goods or particularly high quality goods. So we read like dangerous but prolific. It's an article talking about how incredibly uh, productive a particular mining colony has been lately. So we'll know that if we go there, we're likely to get heaps and heaps of different goods. The airlock is where you get off your ship and get onto space stations to go and talk to people and that. And this is where you sleep. This is more like a your trophy room, little mementos from your journey, from whatever jobs you've taken or people you've spoken to will slowly appear here to be the signifiers of your having done this or that. That's kind of it, that's what we're working on. It's very in-depth, there's a lot of different pieces that come together. Is there a worry that it's too much for somebody to, to grasp? Or? We're trying to we're trying to make the game so it kind of scales depending on how deep you want to go. So all of that stuff in the engineering section, if you really want to avoid that, you absolutely can. You can just go to the nearby starbase, go to a mechanic and say, fix my ship, we'll give them a bunch of money and it will get taken care of for you. Um, similarly, you can get into like manual control if you want to, or you can just click at point and click to go autopilot. All the story stuff that's there is there for people who want to engage with it, but it's absolutely not necessary to if you don't want to. If you want to treat this as a pure sandbox and just go around trading, you can do that too. Now I have to ask, <laughs> what 
what, what, why? Yeah, it's so uh, like, is this just something that was for demonstration purposes, or is this something that you're looking at marketing, like the whole? <laughs> We can't really mass produce anything. We're, we're like one full-time person and three part-time people, so we don't have that kind of uh, facility. But what we are going to do is release all the source code for each individual button. Okay. So if anyone wants to build their own thing at home, they just figure out what buttons they want for their personal console, and they download the uh, the stuff that we'll release on the website. Just download the code, drag and drop to make it all work. We've got Arduinos inside each one of these. Um, it shouldn't take more than some basic ability to solder and plug wires in and that sort of thing to get it all going. Right up my alley. It's just a matter of effort, really. Yeah. Like the first one of these that we did had like one gauge and three buttons and was made in a shoebox. This is the Mark III. The second one was about half the size of this, but it wasn't going to be able to withstand international travel. We just had it on our lap in the plane on the way down to Melbourne for PAX Australia. But then when we figured, okay, let's go take this to the States, we thought, okay, Boston, Seattle, if we're going to do this, we're going to build something that's sturdy. So these things have like handles and all the electronics inside, the little circuits are mounted on bits of plastic that keep them sort of suspended in the middle of the box. So if there's turbulence, they can wobble, but they're not going to hit any wood. Right. But this took us um, at night, maybe uh, a couple of months to build. And we're hoping that people who have become hardcore fans get really excited about doing it themselves. Now, um, playing on a Mac, is this available on Steam right now? Or? No, it'll be out next year. Next year? Um, on Steam for PC, Mac, and Linux. Okay. And the price, do you know yet? Or? Yeah, it's still deciding. Um, we'll figure figure it out when we get there. It's a, it's a big game. It's the biggest one we've ever done. So we're probably going to skew higher than a small mini title, but how much higher, we don't know yet. Ah. How long has it been in development right now? Uh, first prototype was the back end of 13, and then we took a hiatus and made another game. But full time, this has been our main focus for a year and a half. And we got about another year or so to go, I'd say. So it's, a, it's very cool. I like it. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time.